Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Onigne and I'm a lesbian and trans fiber artist. Thank you so much for all the love and support on my previous video talking about training for a half marathon to fundraise for my top surgery. I really, really appreciated it. It always moves me seeing the really thoughtful comments and donations. And yeah, I'm just really happy that I'm carving out a little space on here where I get to talk about just my random thoughts and feelings. And there are people out there that actually watch it and care and listen. So yeah. I just finished week 15 out of 16 of my training. It's been, <laughs> it's been interesting. <laughs> But yeah, I'm continuing to share the journey and the runs that I do and things like that and how I'm finding it. If you are interested in donating to my campaign, it is always linked in the description. Feel free to share it with as many people as you know. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So today I'm going to be knitting and talking with you guys. Today I'm working on the full-sized jumper version of the mini jumper that I worked on in my previous video. By the way, if you haven't watched that video already, go watch it. So just to recap, I made the mini version of the jumper to help me understand the construction that I was trying to achieve. And just so I could know that my ideas could actually work in real life. And yeah, I had to change loads of things whilst making the mini jumper. So it was very good that I actually made it. And it was really helpful. I share progress shots and more in depth pictures and texts from the process on my Patreon and of course I'll be sharing a video of me making the jumper on my Fibre Art YouTube channel, Hooked and Busy. Now let's move on to what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So I was really blown away by all the empathetic and supportive comments on the video where I talked about being an estranged queer adult. It was really amazing to reach so many people who were either sympathetic about the topic or were going through something similar. Because I have so much that I want to talk about around the topic and if my videos even help at least one person that would be enough for me. So just to quickly go through my story because I guess it's always relevant. I ran away from home at 18. Things were quite turbulent and upsetting at home. My parents were always threatening various things and it just got to a point where I thought I can't live like this anymore. The main issue was with me being a lesbian but there were many other points of tension to be honest and yeah I don't really want to get into the why. I packed as much as I could, left. My girlfriend took a train to Birmingham to meet up with me then we took a train to Kent, um, to her family's house, and the rest is history. I remember being so scared that I was going to see someone that I knew while I was waiting for my girlfriend's train to arrive. Also, side note, I remember when someone left a comment on one of my videos saying that since I left at 18, I was just moving out of my house. It wasn't running away. And every now and then, I remember that comment because it's just so stupid. I had to secretly pack as much of my belongings as I could and post them to a friend's house and to my girlfriend's house. I had to leave when my parents were at work and my brothers were still sleeping and I left a note. If you can't call that running away, I don't know what you'd call it. I've made multiple videos about being a queer estranged adult, but I'm aware that I've not actually made a video detailing all the events and how it happened. I think there was an old video of something like that, but I deleted it. I think part of the reason why I haven't made that video is because I've made so many videos talking about being estranged that it almost kind of feels like I have made the video. But then I think the main reason is that it wouldn't be an easy video to make. A lot happened in the months preceding me leaving and also in the months after. So I would have to look through my photos and emails because my memories on it just aren't 100% anymore. But anyways, since I left, I've done so much work to try and rebuild the relationship. I have tried so many times to make them understand the impact of the things that they put me through, how it ultimately led to me running away and distancing myself from them. And I think that part of leaving home is not one that I really talked about, but if you follow my old other socials, you'll see that I have 
been involved in a lot of family events. I've visited home multiple times. I even went on holiday with my family, which by the way, was a horrific idea. It did not go well. I cannot overstate how many times I've made it clear how we got to the point that we're at and the fact that I need acknowledgement and apologies to get any sort of closure. And even though when I left, I felt deep down that things weren't gonna get better between us. You always hope, like hope that it will. You know, they're your family and everyone has one. And I remember one time my friend's mum reassuring me that they would come around eventually. Even my girlfriend's parents believed that, you know, eventually things would get straightened out between us. And I'm their child, so I thought if I explained it many times in many different ways, they would eventually get it and they, then we could have the relationship that I wanted. I didn't want to be the one to give up if there was, if there could be a chance. But through all of that, their opinions have never changed and they have never understood or been able to give me what I needed from them. My parents and multiple members of my family have always told me that I'm always welcome back home and they just want me back home. And I think hearing that over and over again made it so hard for me to be able to say to myself, actually, this isn't working. Things aren't getting better and I can't keep trying. I can't do this anymore. It felt like if I was the one to get to that point, I was the one to throw in the towel, then us being estranged would be my fault because I was the one that was giving up. But the truth is, saying someone is welcome isn't the same as making them feel welcome. Those words didn't mean anything if in the face of me saying clearly what I needed to feel welcome, things were not being done. And it was so weird because I've always known from a really young age, I'm talking like nine or 10, that things were gonna end up like this. And I felt like I had spent my entire childhood preparing for it to, you know, ultimately be like this. But yeah, it was still so hard for me to be able to say, I can't do this anymore. For me to be able to see that nothing was changing and nothing was getting better. There were all these superficial words and empty actions, but never what I said I needed. And the truth is staying in that place of trying to convince them of my experiences and feelings was exhausting and emotionally draining. I was constantly stuck in that limbo of waiting for them to finally understand their part, sit up, apologize, and take the steps to make things better. And every time something happened that made me think, okay, whoa, nothing has changed. I would just think, maybe I need to explain it a different way. Maybe if they see this, they'll understand. It was never ending and it made me feel like my life was on hold. And what I needed so badly was for someone to tell me that it was okay if I couldn't do it anymore. It's okay if the empty promises aren't enough. Or if in your case, you see small steps being made. It's okay if that isn't enough for you to keep trying to have the relationship. It doesn't have to be forever and you don't have to feel like as if you're the one giving up or that you're losing hope of ever having that relationship. And to be honest, my girlfriend was definitely that person for me. But I know that I kept myself in that limbo position for longer than I should have. So if I can be that person for any of you guys, that would make me very happy. I think there's this idea around having strained relationships with your family that you should keep trying and that you're very selfish if you give up or you can't reconcile those differences. The person who gives up and cuts off contact is seen as selfish and unfeeling because they're your family and they love you and you should always keep trying. I can't tell you how many times I've been called selfish and it made it hard for me to make decisions that I definitely should have. For you to understand why they act the way they do, how their past has shaped them, and for you to still think, right now, this isn't enough for me to be putting myself through this. I think particularly for me as a Nigerian, I moved here when I was seven. My parents have been through so much. I know that they fought hard over the course of their lives more than they should have. And I know there'll be parts of that hardship that they haven't even shared with me. Either way, none of it is my story to share, so I won't. But the point is, I have so much love and care for my parents as they are now. And for the younger versions of themselves, who should have been more cared for, more looked after, more considered. There's this idea that someone who can make a decision like this when their immigrant family has been through so much is only thinking of themselves and it's just not true. I make this decision with as much empathy 
and regret and love as I have for my family. And somehow that almost makes it feel worse. But I promise you, if you find yourself in a position where you have nothing in you left to give, no energy left to try with, this is the right choice. Because taking that time for yourself, if and when you need it, means that you're making a choice that prioritizes yourself where other people might not have. And it means that you can emotionally and mentally rebuild so that when you want to, you can give that relationship another try. Or it means that you have the space and clarity to see that whether it's for right now or for the foreseeable future, you're not gonna get the relationship that you want. And the relationship that you do have isn't one that you're interested in having. I don't want people to think that estrangement is definitely forever but I also don't want them to think that it's definitely temporary. There are people who never have that relationship with their family, whether it's by choice or whether it's circumstance. And then there are people who reconnect with their family later on. I mean, I'm pretty young, I'm 22 years old. I don't think I can say with certainty which category I'm gonna fall into, but I do know that the ball is no longer in my court and the way things are right now is the right way for me. I spent so much time giving and giving and asking to be understood and it just felt like my life was on pause. And when I realised I couldn't keep on going like that, I felt so much guilt about it and I just don't want other people to feel that way. So yeah, I hope this video reaches the people who need it and I hope that what I'm saying is what you needed to hear. I also want to make a video more about being a black immigrant, you know, seeing what your parents have been through the wounds and traumas from their childhood and how it informs how they act and the relationship that you have with them but then still having to be the one to break the cycle of putting the family unit above yourself always just so that you don't end up with the same wounds as them i know that sounds so convoluted and obviously that's not going to be the title but you get the general gist of it i think for me it's really important to talk about that and make that video because I think a lot of the conversation that I see about it online is either one extreme or the other with very little nuance. You either have people who believe that their parents have gone through so much, so you setting boundaries and you know, maybe not having that relationship with them is selfish and you're not caring about everything that they've been through. Or you have people who preach about setting those boundaries and preach about, you know, making decisions for you, but then they have no problem broadcasting their parents trauma and experiences in a way that feels almost voyeuristic all in the name of making art about being a child of immigrants or whatever but i know that there are so many of us out there who kind of want to have a bit more of a informed conversation where we're able to see everything that our families have been through but then we want to make sure that we don't end up in those situations. You know, within that group, there's going to be people like me who are estranged from their family. There's going to be people who are in contact with their family and working at, you know, having a healthier relationship and helping their parents heal as well. I don't know. I, I just think these conversations, I mean, is it a conversation? It's just me speaking to a camera. This sort of topic needs to be handled in a better way than I've seen it handled so many times. I think in a way that is full of empathy and respect, but n not full of infantilization and yeah that is definitely something i want to talk about and if you guys are interested in hearing about that let me know i hope you guys have enjoyed listening watching this video when you're watching these videos do you knit with it do you crochet do you put it in the background while you're doing something because i sometimes do that this one was a bit heavier i guess if you relate to what I'm talking about, it will probably feel heavy for you. So just take some time to relax after this video. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope it's helpful to at least one person out there. And I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more conversations like this. Thank you. Bye.